Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Player Spotlight series for the 2020 Carlton trade period. It's the best time of the year to be a Carlton fan when you're not playing in finals, which has been us for a very long time. And um, this week, Pom, um, a, a new name emerged uh, in Tom Phillips from Collingwood. And this piqued my interest. I put him on the agenda. I was really keen to talk about him. I rate him pretty highly. Talk to me about Tom Phillips and, and where this all began and why there's a link. Well, I mean, again, they're looking to clear up salary cap space. It's heavily documented. We've had the Degoe talk. They had to tie Darcy Moore down. You've had articles today from their former list manager saying that if they want to save money, trade Grundy. Obviously, the salary cap there is an issue. So they're going to be looking to jettison these players. And this guy, unfortunately, falls into the category of he's got, da he's got Dacos running rampant. He plays that position. And anyone who's seen Dacos play, absolute superstar. But Tom Phillips is a superstar for me. He's one of the few wingmen who runs both ways. If we look at his heat map, Look at his GPS data. This guy runs all day. He suits the system that Teague looks to play. Comes from a heavy kicking game. We know Colin would love to control the footy via kicks. We know they run hard forward and run hard back. So this guy just slots into that ecology straight away. He would get it. And he is a very, very good footballer. You look at his numbers. He intercepts, gets a lot of midfield intercepts which is huge for Carlton. That's where we score predominantly. Very efficient by foot. For me, he suits the bill and he can change games. If you go back to Richmond 2018, he had just under 40 touches off the wing. The guy is a phenomenal footballer and he, he knows where the goals are as well. He pops up with that elusive goal. So we know goal-kicking mids are like rocking horse poo. They're very rare. This guy fits the bill in that category as well. Big fan of Tom Phillips. Yeah, you know, one thing I, I think about when I think of Tom Phillips is, you know, every year for the last few years, Collingwood have, and every team has it, but Collingwood get injuries or issues or reasons for why their star midfielders miss out. You know, side bottom this year, you know, Dugowie this year. Uh, last year it happened as well for them uh, with Trelaw, you know, with his hammies. And I remember when it was time for, you know, Phillips to step up, he did it every single time. And he's a guy that can get 30 on any given day if he's, if he's in that role. And, the one thing I like about him is that he then moves back into his his initial role where it might not be as prolific. It might not be 28 touches, but um, he plays a role. He doesn't seem like a guy that's getting pissed off with the coaching. He buys in. Um, those are guys who I think can be really valuable. And, and for us, if he was to come in, when I sort of try and think about it, you know, practically, where would he go? I think I think there is a wing spot that we haven't established yet. I think that's probably why we put Walsh there in 2020. But I, I would think that you know by the, you know one you know over the next few years, if not from 2021, Walsh will go back on the ball with Setterfield, with Cripps, with Kerno, um, Lockie O'Brien. Obviously, is the one we drafted to become that that wing man, that wing player. He probably some might think he's not going to make it. Some might think he will. But if he's going to make it, it's probably going to be a still you know. A few years off. So to have a guy like Tom Phillips, who you know is good, as opposed to, you know, Lockie O'Brien, who you hope is going to come good, um, I think is a good situation because then it allows Lockie O'Brien to stay there, develop, and really have to force himself into the side because Tom Phillips is absolutely ready to go from round one. He's good enough. He's played in big games. Um, and I, I just I just like what he's about. Oh, 100%. And I can't agree with you more. For me, with these draftees, we want to be in Collingwood's position where we can have the conversation of getting rid of Tom Phillips because Lockie O'Brien's pushed him out. Like Josh Dykos, there was a lot of talk last year. We need to get rid of him. He's not as good as his dad. Now they're talking about seven-year deals, 700K. Like These players can just suddenly break out. And Josh came from nowhere, and he's been phenomenal all year, which has now put Tom Phillips' position in not a guarantee anymore, where he was probably one of the first names on the team sheet. I mean, he's played 15 games this year for Collingwood. He's been ever-present, really. So for me, that says to me the faith they've got in their youth. And he comes over here as a 24-year-old young man, and it sets the standard, and it allows Walsh to come back on the ball, and it keeps players honest. We saw the impact of Jack Nooms this year. 
which when we did these previews on Jack Nooms, most people didn't want Jack Nooms. And we were here preaching he's very reliable, he's solid. Look how good Jack Nooms was. So Tom Phillips is another player that fits that category. He has an advantage over Nooms. This guy runs hard both ways as well. He does his defensive sets and he attacks hard and he does his job. So it's someone that would come in and instantly make an impact. He is a very good footballer, Tom Phillips, and he probably won't cost you very much. Well, what? let's start with what would it actually take to get him in? And then we'll talk about his salary. So what, what would it take to get him to the club? What, what, what do we have to do? I reckon it would be a third, maybe a second. Depends how desperate. You've got to remember Collingwood are looking to release contract value. They've got issues there. Salary cap is very tight. So for me, so that that's would... their, sorry to interrupt. So, so, you know, we go to the table and we say to Collingwood, we want to help relieve you of salary cap pressure. That's, that's really what the uh, that's what we're dangling in front of Collingwood, not the draft pick we're going to give you. It's the salary cap relief we're going to help you have, so you can then sign I don't know Dugowie or whoever else, right? Yeah. So and obviously there that will come into the value because we're doing you a favour. So I would say a third would probably get a player of this calibre. We look at players that have left clubs. Usually a second or a third gets the job done for someone like Phillips. So for me, I reckon you just take a little bit off that because they need to sell where it's not a case of we need to buy. So yeah. that, that's where it comes into it. But for me, if you can get him for a third round and you do that every day of the week, the guy is a very good footballer. Okay. So then we turn the attention to what kind of salary does he attract? Because I, I, I imagine him to be at least a half a million dollar player. I'd definitely say it would be about the 500, 600 mark with, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, maybe if you're guaranteeing him first team football, which he knows is probably not a guarantee at Collingwood, players will take a bit of a pay cut. So I'd say anywhere from the 400 to 600 mark is, is about his money. Depends what incentives Carlton have put in play for him. But you've got to remember he's 24 years old. So he's 24 and six months. So that's not very old. You're going to get at least six years of football from the guy. So whatever you invest is an investment because you can bring them salaries down a la Hawthorn when you start being successful. So that's something that we've got to remember with Williams and Saad. Two years' time, we win a flag. Their contracts come up. You can negotiate that for a lower value because now we're in the window. Now we're winning. Do you want to go somewhere and not win a flag and earn money or do you want to stay here and become a star? So that's something that you've always got to think with Tom Phillips. Could be 500 now, but easily negotiated to 400 in a couple of years' time when you start pinging out flags. Love it. Love it. No, he, Tom Phillips res, uh, sort of um, encapsulates the, the, the theme that I've been talking about where I'm not so big on going and getting an A-grade superstar and throwing, throwing 900K at them. I'm more about getting two guys like Tom Phillips. I mean, if you look at Zach Williams, Tom Phillips, Adam Saad, that's a pretty good trio to bring in because those three would definitely play in our best 22. I think if we're adding three more players into our best 22 with Charlie to come back, um, with Marchbank to come back, then we start talking about some some actual depth. So interesting one, but let's um, let's leave it to the audience. What do you think about Tom Phillips? I know he's a Collingwood player, but we're here to talk about actual talent here to win premierships. So would Tom Phillips be someone that you'd be interested in or not? And why? Let us know. 